This time I call the March meeting of the County Commission to order. We have with us tonight Mr. Ben Dawkins of the Martin's Crossroads Church to give us our invocation. Following the invocation, we'll remain standing. Commissioner Collins will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' precious name tonight, Lord. We just, we just thank you, Lord, for this wonderful community that we live in, God, and uh, that how you're just working in our community, God. I just I lift up this county commission, God, our leaders in this town, Father. I just pray, God, for, for, for wisdom, God, for, for uh, the fear of the Lord, God, so that they can make the right decisions, Father God, for this town, for this community, God. And I just I want to thank you, Lord, for, for what you're doing in our community, God, how you're how you're saving souls and, and just reaching people, God. And I just, I just ask, Lord, that you, you, you bless us with understanding, God. We have no understanding without you, God. We're nothing without you, God. So I just ask, Lord, that you give us a greater anointing, God, so that we can do your will, God, so that we can do what you call us to do, God. And I just ask, Father, that you, uh, you bless the jobs in this town, God. And I know that you're bringing people here, Father. And I just, I just ask, God, that you just... Fill us with love, God, that we just, just unite us, God, that, that, we, that we reach out to you, God, so that we don't get into our own understanding, God. Just help us stay on track, God, and I thank you for your mercy and for your grace, God, and how, how precious you are, God. And I just, I just want to see a town, Lord, that just comes together and just serves you in a mighty, mighty way, God. And I know it starts with our leaders, God, and I just ask you bless them, their families, their wives. And, and uh, I know it takes a whole family, God. I couldn't make it without my wife, God. So I just ask you bless that families so they can do what you're calling them to do, God. And just be with them and give them peace and strength, God. Strength, God, as they, as they serve this town, God. And I just pray a precious blessing of them, God. And I just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for, for our Savior, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Mr. Dawkins, thank you for coming and giving us our invocation. As we always say, you're welcome to stay. It should be a fairly short meeting, but if you want to leave, we understand that too. And again, thank you for coming. Thank you all for having The next item is the approval of the minutes of the previous meetings. You have them in your packet. Is there a motion that the Minutes be approved as printed. So moved, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion. Is there a second? I, I second, second, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion by Commissioner Collins, second by Commissioner Clyde. Any discussion? Chair hears none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign, the motion's carried. Let me say that um, we know that Commissioner Collins lost his precious daughter a couple of weeks ago and he has been in our prayers we want you to continue to remember the collins family and we have a card from him that says to my fellow commissioners thank you for the beautiful flowers your kind words and prayers your fellow commissioner larry collins so let's keep larry and his family in our prayers item five is the approval of the agenda is our motion to approve the agenda is printed <coughs> So moved, Mr. Chairman. Is that a second? I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Henderson, second by Commissioner Collins. Any discussion? Chair, here's none. All in favor of the motion, let me know saying aye. 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 <clears throat> All opposed, like sign, motion is carried. <laughs> Departmental reports, emergency services is 6A. As you notice, Director Seymour is not with us. He had to go to the doctor late this afternoon with blood pressure problems when he's, yes, I meant Director uh, Broom. Oh, Director Broom, I thought you were going to talk about this one. <laughs> Director <laughs> Broom is uh, uh, having a little blood pressure problems and he's not going to be here tonight, but you do have his written reports. And if you have any questions, just give him a call. Recreation Department Director Glaze, of course he can't come a lot of times because activities are going on at the 
recreation complex, and we're glad there's something going on there. I think you told me the other day he had like 160 or 180 something people in Little League. I don't know how many is in T-ball, but they're having T-ball practice tonight. And uh, I know two of us got grandchildren out there, and here we are here. But uh, you have Director <coughs> Blazer's report. Finance Department, 6C, Director Arnett. Chairman and Commissioners, you have my written reports. If you have any questions, you can let me know. Any questions to Director Arnett? If not, 6D, Director Seymour. <coughs> Chairman, members of the board, you have my uh, written reports. I don't have anything to add to those unless you have questions. I'll be more than happy to um, answer any of those questions at this point in time. Any questions, Director Seymour? If not, thank you. The next item is item seven, this chairman's comments. And I want to make a little statement tonight that we have not discussed uh, publicly in a, really in a good while, and I want to make it. Tonight, on, in February of 2018, Lincoln County filed an injunction against the city of Lincoln to prohibit the city from disconnecting services to the Saddlebrook subdivision. After that, the city included the water and wastewater agreement to the lawsuit and later included the service delivery area to the suit, which is really not a part of the original suit. On March the 4th, 2019, Judge Overstreet filed his order in Lincoln County Superior Court. His order gives both the county and the city clarity. Even though it was not what we fully wanted in the water dispute in its entirety. On the water agreement part of the suit, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> of the suit, the county disputed accounting section which the county and the city are joint producers of water for the county and city water departments. In the late 1990s, early 2000s, maybe up to 2005, Lincoln County received grants and loans for the United States Department of Agriculture of approximately $2 million to fund the update of the county's part of the water plant, which under the agreement, gave the county half the capacity of the water that the plant produces, which is approximately two million gallons a day that the plant is capable of producing. Both the county and city pay a prorata share of operations of maintenance costs for the joint use facility based on each party's actual water consumption of which the county used last year 54.5% of the total production of the joint use facility. In relevant part, the water sales agreement states, the city will establish a special account separate from all other city accounts for the purpose of determining the operation of maintenance cost of the joint use facility. This account will be audited by the city's accounting firm and a copy of such audit will be provided to the county. The county asked that the city open a new account at the bank that would be separate from the city's water account and both the county and the city pay their respective water bill and city deposit it in a new joint use facility account. The court ruled the city maintains a separate ledger, an account number for the purpose of determining and appropriating the operations and maintenance costs of the joint use facility. Although the city does not maintain a separate bank account to pay and track the operation of the maintenance costs, the court finds that this arrangement by the city meets the city's contractual requirement under the water agreement and denies the county's assertion that a separate bank account is required. But the court added, 
Should the county request information related to this account, the city shall provide same within 10 business days. Even though we didn't get separate bank accounts, we will be in a position to get monthly reports on accounts receivable and disbursements. So we did not get exactly what we wanted, but we did get clarity and we are able to get on a monthly basis the financial reports of the joint use facility, which we will do. Saddlebrook subdivision dispute. The county disputed the cost that the city charges the county. The city is charging the county retail price on the water rates for this metering point. The county presently has four metering points, which we pay wholesale rates for three of the four current metering points. The county's position was we spent $2 million to give us up to 2 million gallons, I mean a million gallons of water a day, which we currently only use approximately 180,000 gallons a day. That we bought and usage and pay a prorata share of the maintenance and operations of the cost to operate this facility. We should not have to pay a retail price for our own water. The court ruled, however, the parties dispute the proper charge for water, which is provided to a county meter for the Saddlebrook subdivision in the unincorporated portion of Lincoln County. It is undisputed that water which services the subdivision passes the city's infrastructure prior to arriving to the county's Saddlebrook subdivision meter. The court finds that the water agreement does not set the price which the city may charge for this water. Instead, the court finds that the city may charge the county for water at this metering point in the same manner that it charges its other retail customers. The court denies the county's claim that it was overcharged for this fee and holds that the water agreement does not by itself determine the water rates which the city must charge the county for producing water to the Saddlebrook subdivision meter. To me, this is indeed the most damaging of the misinterpretation of the whole water agreement because the western distribution lines on Washington Highway are also connected through the city's infrastructure and water lines and the county pays a wholesale rate. Basically what the judge ruled was because it runs through the county's water, city's water lines to the county metering point at Saddlebrook, they can pay, we would have to pay retail price. Same thing happens to the western section. It runs through the county's water system, through town, out by the old motel where it's hooked up and goes to the mountain and loco and, and where it goes on the western end of our section that we currently pay a wholesale rate for. So if that's the case, and it is because the judge ruled that, knowing when the water agreement was done for water to reach any other side of the city, it had to go through the city's water line to get to us. They make us pay wholesale at one, we pay retail at the other. I'll never understand it. But that's what the judge ruled, and that's what we will do. As long as we have those eight customers at Saddlebrook. Operation and maintenance costs dispute. The water agreement provides in section 6C as follows. Operations and maintenance cost of the joint use facility will be apportioned to the City of Lincoln and Lincoln County at the same unit cost per thousand gallons of water using the following method. Three, at the beginning of each physical year, the unit operation and maintenance charge shall be based upon a good faith estimate of operation and maintenance cost prepared by the engineers submitted for review and comment from each party. At the end of each physical year, the annual O&M cost will be determined by audit 
and any overpayment will be credited or invoiced to Lincoln County in accordance with the audit cost. Evidence was presented to show that these estimates, this is the judge speaking, these presented to show that these estimates are not always provided to the county prior to the city setting a new rate. However, the evidence also establishes that when the court had raised concerns, or the county had raised concerns, in the recent past, the rate was adjusted retrospectively and prospectively. Thus, water, there was a breach of the, this process, no. There is no damage shown, and either is no recovery for the county. I thought this was interesting. The parties were advised at the hearing of their legal duties under the water agreement and advised again to adhere to their duties thereunder. That's the water part of it. Now we to the sewer. The scope of the agreement under the sewer agreement, the city agreed to accept raw, untreated sewage generated at the Blackjack community from the county under the following conditions, among others. A, that the initial capacity provided from the city to the county would be 45,000 gallons per day, or else an overcharge is applied. And B, the service area would be limited to 140 customers shown on a map attached as an exhibit to the agreement. Last month, we have 45,000 gallons a day. Last month, we used just under 20,000 gallons a day. This contract, listen to what the judge said, this contract is ambiguous. However, in what the actual scope of the sewer agreement covers, the sewer agreement contains a map, Exhibit C, which contains various parcels within the unincorporated portions of Lincoln County. The map includes 140 lots with squares and triangles marked on them, which denotes lots occupied by low or moderate income residents are at the map was drawn up in 2006. The parties disagree as to the interpretation of the contract. The city contends that the sewer agreement states that the contract references the 140 customers, and therefore it must mean that the county is limited specifically to those 140 mark lots. The county, by contrast, points to the section of the sewer agreement that references the map as describing the service area covered by the contract and asserts that language allows the county to connect any 140 customers to lots located in Exhibit C. Both parties presented evidence as to their interpretation of the scope of the agreement providing conflicting evidence. The court finds that the main intent of the sewer agreement was to address the gallons of sewage to be generated from the user within the area of, on Exhibit C map and was not intended to limit its service to just the marked lots. There was disputed evidence as to the original intent of the agreement which precluded the grant of summary judgment. Therefore, the court issues its ruling on the record and its interpretation of the contract and finds that the county is entitled under the sewer agreement to connect up to 140 customers whose lots were shown on Exhibit C map. Attached to the contract and are not limited to the marked lots. However, the court finds that the county breached the sewer agreement by failing to notify the city before hooking new customers to the sewer system so that the city could object if the user proposed for such a lot would create incompatible or unsuitable waste. The court does not find that any monetary damages have been shown from the failure to give such notice. The court therefore orders that the county is entitled to connect up to 140 customers 
whose lots, whether marked or not, are shown on Exhibit C contract map under the sewer agreement. With regard to the customers who are residential and are produced non-industrial waste, the county is required to provide the city with prior notice of the connection. With regard to customers producing industrial waste, the county is required to provide notice and obtain permission from the city prior to connection. However, such permission should not be unreasonably withheld by the city and should occur within a reasonable time from the county's request. I don't want to get into all the detail. I could, I could break it down, but I'm not. I hadn't got time. Okay, whether the service sewer agreement is voidable. The city sought to declare the agreement outlines the charges to be assessed by the city to the county for services in the Blackjack community under the agreement. The charges assessed to the county has two components, a unit charge and a capacity fee. Section 6D of the agreement provides should modification to the water treatment plant be required due to regulatory charges or other unforeseen expenditures, the city of Lincoln reserves the right to increase fees. The court finds that the city's increase of the capacity fee was due to regulatory changes and unforeseen expenditures and therefore properly charged. The county's claim to the contrary is denied. The city's motion to lift sanctions. Now this is, this is, I want the public to understand that this is totally different from the water sewer agreement that we actually were going to court over. Understand at the beginning I said, we filed an injunction in February of last year to prohibit the city from cutting off water to the Saddlebrook subdivision. The judge issued that temporary injunction and the city was not allowed to cut the water off over there. That's what the county filed. After that, the city came in and they filed the water and the sewer part, amended it to the agreement. Also, as you know, and I hope you understand that SDS, Service Delivery Strategy, is entirely different from the water and sewer disagreements or misinterpretation of the agreement on the two or three points that I have just mentioned. While it was going on, the judge took it in. SDS cannot be determined by a court or a judge. SDS by state law has to go to mediation. We went to mediation two different times and we did not come to any conclusion that satisfied either one of us to the fact that we would both sign off on the SDS. Do understand SDS is not a part of the original suit that was being discussed with water and sewer. Had water sewer not even been in the picture, this would have never ever been a part of that. So what has happened is, is, is the only way that the city or the county can qualify for grant monies or for certain permits, environmental permits, water withdrawal permits, various permits, and other things that you've heard us talk about over the last year until this is done by the city and the county. No court can decide how this is gonna be done. Here's what was said at the last part of that hearing. Both parties stated on the record that discussion of reaching a new SDS agreement are ongoing. The court finds that the parties are working together in good faith on the issue and that a mutual but limited lifting of the sanctions is appropriate under the circumstances. The court therefore orders that the sanctions under the official code of Georgia 36-70-27 be lifted and held in abeyance for both parties for a period of 30 days from the filing of this order. If the parties have not agreed upon a new sewer delivery strategy agreement at the expiration 
of that 30-day period, the sanctions authorized by the official code of Georgia 367027 are automatically reinstituted by this court pursuant to the authority of the official code of Georgia 36-70-251. Conclusion, the foregoing is so ordered by the court, the clerk of the Superior Court is hereby directed to serve a copy of this order upon the Department of Community Affairs, 60 Executive Park, Southwest Atlanta, Georgia, by fax or email, giving notice that such sanctions have been ordered. So this tells you that the water part is over. It's history. The SDS is not. We are in compliance today, March the 14th. We are in compliance. We've been in compliance since March the 4th. April 3rd or 4th, we're not in compliance, unless between this time and that time, the city and the county can agree to service delivery areas. The water suit agreement cost Lincoln County approximately, and I wish I'd brought it up here, less than 17,000, 16,000 something dollars was the cost of the bills that we have paid for the water sewer dispute of the lawsuit. SDS is entirely separate again, and I'm, in, I'm emphasizing that for a reason, but the SDS <coughs> is totally different from the water sewer agreement. The SDS has cost Lincoln County 26 or 29, 26,000 and some odd dollars. A total of 43,000 something dollars has been spent in legal and engineering fees. All the engineering fees on our side have come from SDS. So you can see that the biggest part of the 43,000, 26, 29,000 of that went for SDS, not the water. Our water system pays for that based on it, it being an enterprise fund. SDS has only been in existence since 1998, but SDS is a part of your comprehensive and land use plans. Got nothing to do with water. However, understand that in the comprehensive plan, if you look at it, it's probably 35 or 40 different things that the law requires we have to do that if we do jointly, anything like the county, and the development authority is a part of SDS. The county and the library, county and the um, health department, and the county and the city on water, they don't want duplicate services is the reason for that. But we have um, it tried, I've tried to explain it to you the best I can for those listening via YouTube or internet the county does put hours out for the public to get. You can't hear this if you, from the city because they don't tape and do theirs like the school in the county does. Should, but they don't. But for those that uh, have questions, feel free to contact me, any commissioner or director Seymour. We'll be glad to discuss it with you. Uh, we look forward to working with the city, hopefully getting SDS done. Um, two mediations, we didn't do it. and. We will not ever sign an agreement that gives the city of Lincoln the authority to run water lines anywhere they want to in the unincorporated area of Lincoln County. That's not going to happen. So hopefully we can come to some agreement. We have offered them a good bit of the unincorporated area of the county. They have turned it down. Um, I don't. I really don't know what else we can do, but uh, we have not done anything different. We have operated for 20 years on this SDS map. We've not taken anything that the city has had these last 20 years. What the city wants to do is to come out into the county and take over part of the county. The Georgia Constitution says, and lawyers agree, that what's in the unincorporated area is the unincorporated area. What's in the city is the city's territory, and neither city or county can go 
into the other parts without a contract, that, in a governmental type contract giving them the authority to do it. So the county belongs to the city, but we're willing to work and we're willing to be in some, uh, but, but we will not, we will never agree to opening the county up entirely for this. So I want you to know that um, we're working on it. We're going to make a concerted effort to try once again to get this done because it does not benefit either government for the city and the county to be in this dispute. Because beginning and Judge Overstreet was perfectly clear. Don't come back after April the 3rd. This is the last and final time that I will open it back up for y'all to be able to get anything. The city and the county gets lots of money. It affects our LMEG. Uh, Lincoln County gets 300 and something thousand dollars a year. If it's not signed, uh, we stand to lose that and the city stands to lose their proportion. Neither one of us can file for CDBG grants unless this is taken care of. So hopefully we will be able to get it, uh, get it worked out, but I don't know how we can be any plainer than what I just stated. So, and I think that uh, maybe, maybe soon we can get things worked out and, and go about our business. That's, that's what we hope will happen. With that said, we're going to move on. Now. The rest of this agenda will be short. <coughs> Item 8, City County Consolidation Comments, Commissioner Clyde. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, I'd like to table this item indefinitely at this time. Without objection, so ordered. Any objection? Let me explain to you what Commissioner Clyde has just done. He is taking this off the agenda for an indefinite period of time. What indefinite period of time means that it does not come back up before the commission unless one of the commissioners put it back on the agenda. So that's where we stand on the consolidation. Item nine is Georgia Forestry Commission's cooperative agreement. We have an agreement that we have to do each and every year. It is a state law that we do this. Uh, if they provide any forestry service to the county. We have 81,584 acres of land in Lincoln County that, under the jurisdiction of the Forestry Commission and our local volunteer fire departments. We have to pay 10 cents an acre for them to work with us with forest fires. That adds up to $8,158 annually. I'm asking for a motion and to give me and the clerk the authority to sign and that we pay the 81,000, I mean $8,158. I make a motion. Have a motion by Commissioner Wade, is that second? That's second, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Wade made a motion. Commissioner Clyde second. Motion in discussion on the motion. Chair is none. All in favor of the motion, let me know by saying aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, we'd like to add that's the same thing we've been uh, paying along, so there's no change. No change. Yes, sir. It is, I guess, an indefinite line item in our budget, don't you? Yes, sir. Item number 10, alcohol ordinance change brew pub. We're asking to pull this from the agenda tonight. The county attorney and Mr. Seymour and I have talked to the uh, owner of the back paddle. Is that the name of it? Mm -hmm. uh, the microbrewery that's going out to, to um, Mr. Ed Keener's old building is, is where it is. We have to have a county ordinance that state puts a bunch of input into too. It's a difference in a brewery pub and a microbrewery. And we, we, we were operating off of a brewery pub. And that's not what Mr. McLeod is wanting. So we're gonna have to do some work on it. Uh, the good thing is he's not, hopefully he's opens in July. 
So what we are basically doing is the county attorney will be working to draw a new county ordinance. This was going to be an amendment to the alcoholic beverage ordinance. I think we've decided at this time that we will have to have a new ordinance in its entirety. Uh, it was not, once we found out today that, that it had to be changed, we didn't have time to present it tonight. So we're asking that we table this and the clerk put it back on the agenda for the April meeting. Any objection? If not, so ordered, and the clerk will put it on the April agenda. Got that, Madam Clerk. <laughs> 11 is the annexation of the former OES building. As most of you know, um, sometime in late 2016, the EMS left its headquarters and moved out to Global Drive, which left this building down here by the sheriff's office. We took the living quarters several months ago and we have turned it into the sheriff's patrol and investigative divisions. The other side, which is approximately 2,800 square feet, uh, we have voted and work is being done to house the probate magistrate court in that building and it's going to be nice. To do that, you have to have a courthouse annex building to move a court to. So we are having to um, pass a resolution. It basically says, where is the building located? 186 School Street, Lincoln and Lincoln County, Georgia, formerly known as the Office of Emergency Service Building is owned by the Board of Commissioners Lincoln County, Georgia, and where is the Board of Commissioners Lincoln County, Georgia, desires to rename the building to be in conformity with other courthouse buildings. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the former Office of Emergency Services Building located at 186 School Street, Lincolnton, Lincoln County, Georgia, shall be known and designated as the Courthouse Annex B. The jail and the tax commissioner's office and director doctor's office is in Annex A. So, I need a motion that gives me the authority to sign the resolution, the clerk's authority to sign and attest it to name the building down there, Lincoln County Courthouse Annex Building B. Mr. Chairman, I'll make that motion. I have a motion, a second. Second. Motion by Commissioner Collins, second by Commissioner Henderson, any discussion? All in favor of the motion, let me know I'm saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign, motion's carried. Item number 12. Interim financing for Montego Point Water System Expansion, Director Arnett. Chairman and Commissioners, um, we're asking you to authorize the county to spend money out of the general fund to, um, for interim, to cover interim financing on the Montego Water Expansion System. Okay. Director Seymour, you have anything to add to that? Okay. We'll do, we're doing interim financing, um, which means we have to put up some money up front and we get it back when the USDA grant pays us back. So we, I know y'all know I'm talking to them now. So we, we pay it from the general fund and when the grant money comes in, general funds paid back. But we have to have a motion to do that. Is there a motion then that we do the interim finance from Montego Point water system expansion? I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman. Have a motion and a second. I second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Wade, second by Commissioner Clyde. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Wade. Do we have an idea how much money we're talking about? 54000 I think. Um, as, of, as of today, it's about $54,000, but it'll be more than that um, as we go along. Um, and then what will happen is once we get the interim finance and we'll reimburse that general fund money back to there. Yeah. Right now, as of date, I think it's around, it's just, just a hair above $54,000. But it will grow a little bit as we go. And we're going to start construction in um, about June? Uh, well, we'll probably go out to bid about June. That's we'll right, probably yeah. be in construction around October, November. Yes. Thanks, yes, sir. Any other discussion? All in favor of the motion, let me know I'm saying aye. 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 All opposed, like, sign, motion's carried. Item 12. 
That was I, I just did that. Item 13. I never like 13. We all just keep it and go from 12 <laughs> to 14. SDS funding direct to RNET. Chairman and commissioners, we are asking for you to authorize the county to spend money out of the general fund to cover the, um, to reimburse the water fund for the monies that have been spent on the SDS that the chairman was talking about earlier. That's a pro. Do you know the exact number of that? Thousand four hundred and it's a little over twenty six thousand dollars. Twenty six thousand four sixty three, maybe. Twenty six six twelve fifty. How much? Twenty six thousand six twelve fifty five. Okay. Yes. And that will re be reimbursed the water fund. Correct. We paid that out of the water fund originally. It needs to be reimbursed. Okay. Back. I think we all understand that. It was discussed at the yes. work session. Is there a motion that we transfer these funds from the, from the water general fund to the water fund for SDA funding? I made a motion, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion, second. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Clyde, second by Commissioner Collins. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, here's none. All in favor of the motion, let me know I'm saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion's carried. Item 14 is adjournment. Is there a motion that we adjourn? I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion, is there a second? Second. Thank you. Motion by Commissioner Wade, second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, here's none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like, sign. Motion is carried, and we stand adjourned.